This is a thoracic vertebra. I will use this vertebra to show you the main parts of a vertebra. This is the body of the vertebra. And this is the vertebral arch. There are several parts in the vertebral arch. The pedicles, the lamina, the transverse processes, the spinous process, and the superior and inferior articular processes. This is the vertebral foramen. This, this, this is the intervertebral foramen through which the spinal nerve comes out. This is a typical cervical vertebra. The principal features that differentiate it from vertebra from other regions of the uh, vertebral column are the, the foramen in the transverse process, the anterior and posterior tubercles on the transverse process, and the bifid spine. If you look at this vertebra carefully, you can see that relative to the size of the vertebral body, the vertebral foramen is large and it is, it is triangular shaped. This is the first cervical vertebra, atlas. It is an atypical cervical vertebra because it does not have a body or a spinous process here. Instead, it has a, an anterior arch and an anterior tubercle on the anterior arch, a posterior arch and a posterior tubercle on the posterior arch. This is a groove on the posterior arch for the vertebral artery. This area is called lateral mass. The superior articular facet is to articulate with the occipital condyles of the skull. And there are inferior articular facets that articulate with the axis. Here, on the inner aspect of the anterior arch, there is an articular facet for the odontoid process of the axis. These are tubercles for the transverse ligament, which is attached between the two tubercles here and prevents the odontoid process of the axis impinging on the spinal cord behind. This is the second cervical vertebra, axis. The feature that differentiates it from all other vertebrae is the odontoid process, or dense. This articulates with the anterior arch of the atlas. This is atlas and axis. This is how they are articulated. They can move like this. The transverse ligament that is here prevents movement, the back, the posterior movement of the geonotoid process. This is the seventh cervical vertebra or vertebra prominence. If you look at the spine of this vertebra, you can see that it's not bifid and it's a very prominent spine. The features of a typical cervical vertebra are there. The foramen in the transverse process and the anterior and posterior tubercles. This is a thoracic vertebra. The principal feature that differentiates a thoracic vertebra from vertebrae of other regions of the vertebral column is the presence of articular facets for ribs. 
The articular facet on the transverse process articulates with the articular facet of the tubercle of, the, of its own rib. And these articular facets on the body are half facets. Therefore, they are called demifacets. The upper demifacet articulates with the facet of the head of its own vertebra. The lower demifacet articulates with the facet on the head of, of the rib below that level. If you look at other features of this thoracic vertebra, you can see that the spinous process is non-bifid. It's long and slender. And you can also see that the transverse process has no foramen here, like in cervical vertebrae, and there are no tubercles here. The vertebral foramen is small and rounded. This is a lumbar vertebra. Notice the large kidney-shaped vertebral body and the relatively small triangular-shaped vertebral foramen. If you take a lateral view, you can identify the thick quadrilateral shaped spinous process. It is horizontally placed. If you look at the superior articular facets, you can see that they are facing inwards or medially. The inferior articular facets, on the other hand, are facing outwards or laterally. If you take a look at the body, unlike the thoracic vertebrae, these will not have articular facets on the body or on the transverse process. And there are no foramina in the transverse processes.